Hey there, I'm Eric, an engineer with Abyss Headphones, and I have some of the parts for our new Diana MR in front of me. I wanna talk specifically about some of the changes, why they occurred, because I think it's kind of interesting. We're gonna cover the frame, the slider, a little bit on the inserts, the headband, and even cables. At the end of this video, Joe's gonna be here talking about measurements, so stay tuned if you wanna see that. All Dianas start here. This is a single piece of 6061 T6511 manifold grade domestically sourced aluminum. A little bit of machining occurs and we end up somewhere around here. So this is a existing Diana TC frame. Um, we've had many revisions over the years. This is a B7 variant. Um, this is the currently produced ones. And here's the new MR frame. Similar enough on the outside, quite a few changes on the inside. And I wanna point you through those because I think it's quite interesting. The goal with a part like this is always to achieve as many things as possible in a single piece. This has critical features for both locating and securing the connector, making electrical contacts with the diaphragm, holding everything in place, holding the driver assembly, providing some acoustic tuning as well as the height adjustment. And it also, of course, is a critical feature that gives you your aesthetic finish on the outside. With machining, there's nearly unlimited ways to achieve a final part. It all comes down to the skill and the experience of the machinist. Here I have a current production Diana TC frame, and this is a new MR frame. Now, both of these went through many variants to get to where we are today. This is actually a B7 version of the TC frame, current production, and this is the M2 version of the MR frame, which is a more recent current production. But of course, this went through <laughs> hundreds of iterations to get to where it is here. So what changed from here to get to here? What did we learn and what improved? One of the things I was really pushing for on Dyn MR was to reduce the weight of the components while also retaining good manufacturability. Now, we've made many thousands of Dianas at this point, so we have a pretty good experience manufacturing roughly this geometry, this shape, and this style part. And with that, it allows us to leverage this experience to be able to do things that might not be very economical for other people to do, but we could push the tools real hard when we know we could get away with it. And when we can't, well, you know, you back off a smidge. And with this part, we did a lot of creative machining to be able to reduce the mass of the part so that this part is lighter than the regular TC frame, even with this insert loaded in it. You can see all these holes on this outside edge of the part. They actually get blocked by the insert that goes in here. However, they're there primarily for weight reduction, a few other small benefits. And um, the nice thing about a hole is it can be formed very easily with a drill and you can get a pretty small radius to get in the tight corners. Our machines are very good at drilling very fast. So this happens to be one of the most effective ways to remove a lot of material. And you can actually get millions of cycles out of one of these drills, drilling like this. So the tools last practically forever. So the cost to add this feature is very, very low. Um, and I always really like that. Leveraging what the machines, the tooling is good at to be able to deliver a final part to the end user that's a little bit better. One of the nice things about putting this pocket feature in here is we have this rib in here now that provides a lot more structure to the part. So we could get away with thinner features outside here. So these surfaces are actually much thinner than they would be on a normal part because of the height difference here. It makes this part much stronger. So through our manufacturing process, and of course, all the way out to the end user, you get delivered a stronger, better part. And oddly enough, it's still lighter weight. We made a few minor changes to the slider portion of this frame. Drilled some holes around these bosses here, so you could still get good spread of the clamping load for the back plate that goes on here, but reduces mass where it doesn't provide any structural benefit. Some of these magnet pocket holes actually go into this logo a little bit further, so they're non-uniform depth to try to maximize the material removal and ensure we have closer to even wall thickness throughout this structure here. This slider portion of the frame is actually machined out of a different grade of aluminum. This is made out of 7075 T6 aluminum. We need that for the additional stiffness and strength to be able to achieve this design in low weight. We manage to shave around 0.4 grams per side off with the new design. We're just making these now, so it'll be a little while before they roll out, but added some drill holes, changed the pattern a little bit, changed the wall thicknesses and geometries a smidgen. This slider assembly used to be fully loaded with these disc magnets. These are custom made for us. And now we also have these 
ones with a hole in them. It allows us to specifically locate them in the right regions to adjust the sliding profile and the feel. It also saves rare earth consumption and reduces weight of the headphone slightly. So this slider element here has magnets in it. There's magnets in this frame assembly. And what that gives you is a very long life sliding mechanism that doesn't rely on friction. And we extend this kind of design methodology to everything we do here at Abyss. That's why we're offering a 10 year private warranty on all of our headphones, including Diane MR. Here's a pretty big change. The headband element. Inside this leather, there's a piece of spring steel that's bent and heat treated to shape to provide the clamping and the flexibility for the headphone. This is what it used to look like. It's got all these laser cut lines in it, and it's got these elements at the end that interface to the slider assembly. This is the new design, and it basically made one headband into two. There's a laser cut line all the way down the center here, so it separates these two sides, gives you much more flexibility, and it reduces the unnecessary mass on this. So this is quite a bit lighter than this design, and it provides a lot more flexibility. It's much more forgiving fit, and it allows it to accommodate more head shapes and sizes. We want to encourage a rich ecosystem for our customers. And with that comes cables. So we currently have a injection molded plastic connector, fits in there nicely, provides good strain relief, nice aesthetic appearance. And we designed this with aftermarket support in mind. There are a few connectors that fit in there nicely. However, we want to extend that offering a little bit further and we decided to make this. So it's a connector with the right D-shaped profile that fits in there, provide good strain relief, has a very large opening for large aftermarket cables. And we want to be able to sell these as affordably as feasible uh, so other people can make their own aftermarket cables and the people that already do could use this connector if they choose. And with that, now we got Joe to talk about measurements on the MR. Hi everyone. Today we're going to show you how we measure the distortion of a new Diane MR. And we have a Diane MR here in the isolation booth on the B and K 5128 test head. It's the current reference standard for measuring headphones. So what we're gonna do first is in order to get the proper distortion measurements, we need it to be in isolation. In other words, you can't have noise around it affecting the measurements. So we'll close the door on the booth and that seals the headphone in there and the level inside that booth is about 25 dB or so. We'll go here and we will first calibrate the system. We're gonna tell it to set 90 dB. It's, it's automatically finding what output level to the headphone it needs to output to give you a 90 dB volume level out of the headphone into the microphone. Once it finds it, it's calibrated to that headphone, and that will be zero dB on a frequency response. So 90 dB out of the headphone is actually zero when you look at frequency response measurements. It's done with that, and we will close these sidebars so you can see the measurement better, and uh, we'll hit start. Okay, now we're doing something a little tricky on this one. Tricky in the sense that no one usually shows the frequency response of the ambient noise. So when you see the top graph, channel one on the measurement test set, that's the actual frequency response of the headphone. Channel two in the red line here, there's no signal coming out of the headphone there, it's just what the mic test mic sees inside that booth. And obviously it's a much lower level, okay? Now where that becomes important is in the total harmonic distortion. So here's THD, total harmonic distortion, or what the test set sees for total harmonic distortion from the measurement. The red line, again, is in the booth, but there's no signal being applied, so it's strictly, whatever the noise is in there, it thinks is total amount of distortion, and this is the absolute level of the booth. So that's the noise floor of our test set, the red line. Therefore, the headphone is just above that, and you can see the headphone THD is pretty low. It rides pretty close to the noise floor of our test system. And to give you a better number on that, we'll go to a THD ratio, so you could see as a percentage, the, this Diane MR starts at about 0.1% THD at 20 hertz and drops down. It's got a little bit of a peak here at um, around eight kilohertz or so, but even at 0.2%, that's not audible. Um, you know, you get below half a percent or so, you can't hear this. So on average, this Diane MR is somewhere around under 0.05% THD, which is extremely low distortion. As the frequency response goes, you could take a look at it here. It's fairly flat frequency response. 
Um, we consider this headphone to be, can be usable for, used for professional use, as well as for uh, audio files. Uh, it has a relatively linear freak response from top to bottom, and uh, which would be great for professional use. It doesn't really require any equalization. And it sounds, because of the very low distortion, it sounds very clear, and it's very good, true to the source. So uh, it should be great for all around use. And that's what we designed it for. So we'll have these measurements on our website. If you go to the Diane MR page, uh, under the specifications, you can look for THD or total harmonic distortion measurement and frequency band measurement. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care.